Hi, Charles Moman here. Well, recently I finished putting the Max Air fan on my 2020 Runaway Camper Range Runner, and so now I'm ready to do some electrical changes that I've been wanting to do for a long time. Thanks for watching. Well, in my Max Air fan install, I showed a lot of different tools that I use, but this is pretty simple. I'll be using uh, a drill uh, to both run screws in and to drill pilot holes for me. Uh, I like using a level to try to keep things nice and straight. Uh, these WISS, W-I-S-S, heavy-duty scissors are great. I use them for cutting wire, uh, for cutting the cord mate channel that I use. Um, a wire stripper uh, isn't required, but it sure makes it a lot easier. And then a regular and a Phillips screwdriver. And that's about all the tools that you'll be needing for this project. As I walk through this project, I will be showing you all the different parts, but um, what I use for supplies was I always use silicone. I like using the clear. Uh, this is the cord mate. This is what I used in my project where I was adding LED lights. So I got ivory color to match the interior of the runaway. And then I'm using various plugs. And so I've got a right angle here and just a regular plug here and a regular uh, outlet to plug into. And so um, I also use waterproof, what are called in-duty, in-use, heavy-duty, in-use, uh, weatherproof boxes um, and so uh, those are the main things that I use and then different kinds of wire. I, I had wire that um, I took out as I was doing this project but I actually repurposed a lot of the wire that Runaway had used and then I, bu I bought some extra at a hardware store just to, um, to do a long run that I was doing to the back. So not a lot of supplies, just sort of I'll make a list and put them down in the description. So I mentioned that we loved our original camper and really liked the extra space of this camper. But there were just a couple of small things that I wanted to change. Um, you, this is the original box that was right there. And you would open it up and this cord, this plug would come out and you would plug into shore power. And so you'd plug it into that extension cord and then jam it in there. And it was a tight fit. It really was hard. And some uh, heavy-duty extension cords, the plug is really big and just not, you really can't bend it much. So that was just a bit of a pain that I didn't like. So I wanted to change that for sure. And as you'll be seeing, I switched it out with two other we weatherproof boxes. Um, by the way, this is getting used. I'm repurposing that. It's, it's right now on the end of a skill saw that needed a new plug. On the inside, the main thing I wanted to do was change out uh, these power strips. Uh, they're actually black. My wife painted this to match, but um, it's out now. So there was one of these right here and then one in the back. And I particularly didn't like the, it in the back because it was down lower than I wanted. I wanted one up higher out of my way so I didn't kind of bump into it or accidentally unplug a phone charger during the night. And so that was a lot of my motivation to, for making these changes. And so um, Again, it was nothing bad that, w that was in the original, just some things that I just wanted to make more convenient. So that's what this project is going to be about. So let's talk about uh, what I did out front here. Uh, originally, uh, as I showed you, I had this original white box, took that out, and my first plan, and I actually installed this, this is a two-gang weatherproof uh, in-duty use cover, it's called, and it's got tabs where you can uh, run the wires out and so I thought oh it's two gang that means I could have my uh, plug that goes to shore power and then an outlet I can plug in and it will all fit in here so I put it on here didn't work because even though it's wider it wasn't any deeper and so typically you would cut a hole in here have your box and then this would be over top of it then you'd have enough room but I, I did not want to do that and so I went back uh, to Home Depot and found they had these deeper boxes that worked out great. So it'd be nice if it was one big one, and, uh, but this is what I ended up using and it's fine. And so now I've got uh, the cord coming out and I've got the uh, a right angle plug. So I'll come in from shore power and plug this in and now it will more easily 
fit right in there without any problem. Here I'm going to have the um, uh, a cord coming out. It's one of the just two things I need to be doing today. Um, a little bit out here and a little bit inside. Um, but I'm going to be adding this regular plug with the cord that's going to come out of here. And then I can plug in like a charger. I, I'm charging my camera batteries or I'm charging up one of my lithium batteries or something like that. So this will just be handy to have. And um, then I also have a, an extension cord that has a, a right angle that can plug in, that can hang down if it's not raining or anything. And so it would give me two or three outlets out here. So that's what happened all out here. And let me mention what's happening here is the shore power comes in here. This wire that's connected goes straight down through the floor and it goes into a junction box underneath. And I'll show you a picture of that. And that junction box, uh, there are three wires going in. So you have this wire going down into the junction box, another wire that's going to the back of the camper underneath and then up through the floor and it powers the new power strip that I've got. I took out the old long one and put in the shorter one and I put it all the way up to the top so it's really out of the way and you'll be seeing that. And then an, the, the power comes back up and it originally went to uh, the power strip but I'm switching that out and so now uh, the way it's going to work is it's going to come up and I will have this ground fault uh, receptacle here and it's a flush mount box and it's made by the same company um, that makes the cord mate that I use uh, to hide the wires outside and inside. And so this will be mounted right about there. And so the power is actually going to come in here. And so when uh, the air conditioner is plugged in, it'll be ground fault protected. This new plug that's going to come out, it's going to be wired directly to this. And so anything plugged in out here will be ground fault protected, which is great because we are quite often in a wet environment and camping, even just the dew in the morning. And so uh, that's really going to be a good safety feature um, with the way that the wiring is going to be working now. So anything that's plugged in out there or here will now be ground fault protected, and that's a good thing. Well, I finished editing this video and I decided I should insert just a little bit more information about the ground fault receptacle that's inside. And just make sure you understand something. The ground fault receptacle is inside here. It's being fed by shore power that comes in. But this plug actually itself isn't ground fault protected because of it and neither is the uh, new power strip in the back corner. And he here's why. The power comes in goes down to that junction box and goes directly to that power strip. Then it comes and it also comes up and is wired into the new ground fault receptacle. That means both this plug and that power strip are upstream. So they're, they're not a, being affected at all by that ground fault receptacle. Now, anything that's plugged into that ground fault receptacle or wired like this is wired directly into the box is ground fault protected. So is that uh, power strip that I've got here. So that's all good. Um, so technically this isn't, not technically, it's not protected by that receptacle. However, it's in a box, it's protected. And then when you think about it, when you plug into shore power at a campground, look at those outlets. They are ground fault protected. Now I'll have to admit, sometimes they are a little bit wonky looking. That's why I'm glad I've got that circuit tester. I'm going to start checking uh, the outlets because sometimes they don't look too great. Most of the time they're fine, but they are ground fault protected. And um, I want to make sure that you just that you realize that. But then I, I noticed uh, at Amazon, and I'm thinking about ordering one. You can order an inline protector, and what it is, you can get a three foot up to a 25 foot um, inline protector. So it plugs into the shore power into the campground, and built in line is a ground fault protector, and then it plugs into here. So when you have that, then it definitely is protecting you here. Okay. So that's something you might consider. Um, it just makes me thankful that I don't have a big fancy rig. This is unbelievably simple. Uh, I watch some RV families like Keep Your Daydream and they recently did uh, a video about uh, electronic protection because a lot of those big rigs have very expensive circuit boards that run everything inside. And so you'll see them with one, two, three hundred dollar units that they've got plugged in so to protect everything in their uh, very expensive RVs and we don't have that and that makes me pretty happy. Well you may have noticed when I was already talking about the the wires up front or the junction box underneath 
I'm not showing you how I wire them. Uh, it's pretty easy. It's three wire, and you have to know which wire goes where, the hot, the neutral, and the ground. And so I really don't want to get into that because I don't want you to get hurt. If you know how to do this, you're good. If you don't, um, I just got on YouTube. I have already changed out outlets before. So that's basically what's going on here. Uh, putting the, doing the junction box, I hadn't done before, but all I did was mimic what was underneath and match the colors and gathered the, the three green and the three white and th the three black and used wire nuts and double checked everything. I've already checked back here uh, with my tester and I use the circuit tester to show me if, I, if everything is correct. And it'll tell you if something's not grounded or if there's some error, you switch something. So um, my warning is if you're not comfortable with wiring because this is real electricity and you can't get hurt, you can get killed. So uh, if you're uncomfortable, learn how to do this or have a friend help you. It's not a huge job. Um, but you want it done correctly and you want to be safe. So uh, however you do this, make sure that uh, you don't get hurt. That's for sure. Well, I said I'm not going to let you see me actually wire things, and I'm not. But I do, real quickly, just want to talk about what, what we're generally speaking of. Um, you're going to be working with wire. I mainly worked with this wire. This is uh, similar to exactly to the wire that Runaway uses to wire this. And um, it's also waterproof. So... Um, it's three wires, and this is typically what you're going to see in, in any situation. And it's got a green, which happens to be uh, ground, black for positive, white for neutral. And this one, this is kind of like what you see typical in house wiring, and it's white, black, and then the bare uh, ground wire. And so, you know, if you're unsure, I'm going to be I'm posting the some YouTube samples that you can look at. Um, a lot, a lot of times what you'll buy will be Leviton brand. If you look them up, they'll show you diagrams of how to wire these up. Just those three colors mainly, and just be careful and do your research or get someone that knows what they're doing. Well, let's head on inside and take a look. I've got the interior lights on, so I'm on shore power right now. You can see the passive fan up there, and I'm actually using the new outlet to run the... Uh, studio light just to light it up a little bit and there's my new outlet back there so here's the new outlet in the back replacing the long one that used to go way down there and now this is up out of the way there are three USB ports on the top and four outlets widely spaced and the power strip cord is going down the cord mate down to the floor that new power strip in the back is plugged into an outlet just like this and this is wired the uh, wire coming from the junction box in the front, running under the camper, coming back up through the original hole, and this is what's there. Just this plug sticking out a few inches, and so the new power strip is plugged into that, and it's just that simple. So here in the front, I've sort of emptied out the place, so Susie will be getting it fixed back up. Uh, originally, I was going to put an uh, outlet around a cord over, over to the right side over here, but we decided we really didn't need that, so um, we've got the shelf that Susie built and keep our clothes and other things down there and a Jackery 500 on the bottom on the left will probably reside there most of the time and then you can see the new Max Air 12 speed reversible fan and I have now will have two ways of running that and I'll be showing you that and then over here you can see the uh, new setup I've got with the old power strip out and a new ground fault outlet and a new power strip like the one in the back. Let me talk about the setup that I've done here and I'm sure there are a multitude of ways of doing it but I've thought this out and for me this works great. So what we've got here you can see three cord mate uh, tubes that are gathering in wire and so what's happening there? Well in the middle coming through the wall is that plug that plugs into shore power. That wire comes in, goes down, goes into the junction box and there in the junction box it's uh, wired up with two other wires. One of those wires is coming right back up here to this ground fault receptacle. The other one is going to the back to the new um, uh, power strip back there that's just like this one. So the wire comes in. This is a, a flush mount box, which I love. It worked out great. Typically you have to cut a hole, and I'm not going to do that. Um, it's got a, a plate, a metal plate that you screw that in, then this pushes in. You do all the wiring 
and then put the, uh, the cover plate on it and there you go. Uh, it's got a reset button and a test button and so because I've got ground fault here that means this wire here which you can um, which goes right into the box it's, there's uh, what's called load and do your research you look on the YouTube video I'll tell you about how to do that and so you the wiring goes into the standard wiring here and this goes into the the load and that's all I'll say about that just look it up and so that wire is going out to the second box with that outlet that I wanted that I that was something I definitely wanted outside so it's ground fault protected so if it's wet I'm safe and so we've got the box we've got the new uh, power strip and the, that power strip you can see this tube is going down and it's just I'm, I did that just to gather because there's a lot of cord and I didn't want to cut it so it's going down and then it's plugged in so that means this is ground fault protected as well and then we've got the air conditioner has already been run through and used to plug in over here and now it's plugged in here that's pretty much how it works and uh, one addition I want to add is that um, when I am on shore power uh, if I want to uh, run my max air fan um, I can do that with I just got this today from Amazon and so I can plug this in and this will plug in let me reach up here this this can will plug in so I can uh, run this up through the hole and so I can plug this in and run the 12 volt uh, max air fan with this adapter but what if we don't have shore power well that's what I'll show you next okay so with this setup we're all good with shore power. Everything runs. It's uh, ground fault protected. All's good. But we were at um, Rocky Mountain National Park. We were at Capitol Reef National Park last year and some other places where we didn't have power. Like if I stop at a Cracker Barrel or something. We still want to run lights and I still want to run that, uh, that fan. That's why I got it. Um, because I won't be able to run the AC because I don't bring a generator with me anymore. So I put in the the max air fan here and the passive vent and I wanted to to pull air through this thing and so what we'll do is um, we don't have power coming into this anymore but I have still have things uh, plugged in here so I might have for example you know a, a laptop sometimes at night we'll um, set a lap uh, one of our laptops up and um, watch a movie that way or um, I bought a, um, a not too big of an extra monitor that I can bring along with us and so I'm going to use that for editing but also could, we could do that for a movie so that could be sitting on this shelf and so I can power it all through that Jackery battery and so what I could do is I will be unplugging the power strip and this will plug into this this will plug into the lithium battery which is down here but I could set it up here it doesn't make any difference and now I, I can still run pretty much everything especially with the, the 500 watt everything except the air conditioner and I don't need it because I'm going to have this fan. So that's how that's going to work. So I'm set up for shore power or lithium battery power. Uh, this is a great little system and um, I really took my time with it. And I'm going to say it again. Uh, the wiring really turned out, I've never done this much wiring in my, in my life. But I checked it along the way. I watched so many YouTube videos and I felt very confident about it. And it all worked out. So um, this is a really great modification. And we're really pleased with it. Well, there you have it. Recently, I've been working on some big projects. One was the Max Air fan on top with the passive vent. And that was a little scary, but it's turned out great. And this one was a little more calm for me, even though I'm not used to wiring a lot of things. But as I've shown you, it's pretty easy stuff to do as long as you are careful and methodical and use that circuit tester. Thanks for watching.